Hi everybody, this is Kyle Sears from Zoll. Today's X-Series Tips and Tricks video is going to focus on maximizing the effectiveness of our finger probe. Whether your X-Series has just SpO2, carbon monoxide, or met hemoglobin, the ability to make sure that you're getting good, accurate readings lies in understanding the other value that you see on the screen, which is the perfusion index. The perfusion index is going to tell the provider whether or not the finger they have chosen to put the finger probe on is perfusing properly and make them aware of whether or not the other values on the screen that they see are legitimate or not. The finger probe itself is important in the way that you place it. So ideally, you're going to place this on the patient's non-dominant ring finger. And on most people, the non-dominant ring finger is going to be the finger over the course of their life that is the most protected, the least damaged, has the best capillaries, the best perfusion, and should in turn get you the most accurate readings. But our perfusion index is going to help us make sure that's the case. So I'm left-handed, for example, so I would put it on my right ring finger. If there's any doubt on the sizing, you can take the patient's non-dominant ring finger, and if they can fit their finger through this little sizing guide, which is present on any uh, finger probe that has carbon monoxide and met hemoglobin, if they can push their finger through the other side and when it goes past the nail bed, that means they should be using a smaller, typically disposable pediatric finger probe. So once that's placed on the patient's finger, the monitor will start the search process. You'll see the pleth wave automatically come up on the screen and then in the bottom right corner, you're going to have your SpO2 value, which takes into account total blood gas saturation in the patient's body. And then the smaller numbers, again, based on your configuration, are going to present SPCO for carbon monoxide. This monitor also has SP met hemoglobin monitoring. And then that last value that we keep seeing flash here is the PI number. So if you take into account SpO2, in this case 98%, what that doesn't factor in is what percentage of carbon monoxide molecules are present and also in this case met hemoglobin mo molecules as well. So a true indication of my blood gas saturation on a reading that says 98% takes into account 0% of carbon monoxide and also 0.4 of met hemoglobin currently. The value that says PI, which will be the next number that flashes right here of 1.6, tells me as the provider that the finger that I've chosen to use for this particular patient is perfusing well enough to legitimize the other values that are being presented while I'm monitoring the patient. The perfusion index or PI value should be anywhere from 0.0, .0 to 20. The higher the number, the better that site is perfusing. The goal is for the PI value to be 1.0 or higher. That tells me as a provider that yes, this finger that I'm using for this particular patient is good and I can trust that the other values on the screen are being represented accurately. Now let's say for example, that PI level was 0.7. I would then go and look at the patient, make sure that the sizing is appropriate what we talked about earlier, making sure the patient's on, or the finger probe is on the patient's non-dominant ring finger, and then take other factors into consideration. Maybe their hand is cold and needs to be warmed up under a blanket. Maybe there's ambient lighting that's affecting the readings of the finger probe. Or maybe they just don't perfuse properly in that finger. They might have nerve damage. You can also consider maybe dark nail polish on the patient as well. So it gives you, a, as a provider, an opportunity to Confirm the numbers that you see as being accurate, and you don't have to worry about second-guessing whether or not the finger that you're using is the appropriate finger for that particular patient. Now, this is available on all X-Series. If for some reason you don't see that option in the bottom right corner, you can scroll around, hit Enter, and where it says PI Monitoring, you can make sure it says On. If it does not, you can toggle over, switch it to on, and then hit the home button. So then going forward, when you're treating your patients, you'll have the perfusion index as an option for a vital sign monitoring. 